hydrogen combustion engines are officially back from the dead. Bosch and Toyota Motor Company just announced that they expect to increase their capital expenditure into the development of hydrogen-based engines. In the entire year of 2023, Toyota sold over 11.2 million vehicles globally, but only 104,000 of them were actual all-electric. This means that less than 1% of Toyota's entire production and deliveries are of all-electric battery vehicles, which means the company is heavily reliant with its suppliers and its co-partners on the development of combustion technology. And this, folks, is exactly why the company is not ruling out the development of hydrogen-based combustion for ICE platforms. Hydrogen combustion isn't something new. It's been around for a couple of decades now, but the technology has been very difficult to develop and commercialize because of safety as well as technical regulations that make hydrogen a little bit more complicated than gasoline or diesel. However, after global automotive supplier Bosch from Germany just announced alongside Toyota that it is also going to launch a hydrogen engine by the end of 2024, the odds of this technology getting to commercial scale is improving like never before. So what exactly is needed to bring hydrogen engines back on the mainstream ballot after being dismissed by many automakers over the past decade? And what are the advantages as well as disadvantages versus a gasoline or a diesel engine, not only when it comes to performance, but also emissions and energy efficiency? Well, folks, those questions are exactly what we're going to address in this video. And well, folks, what better way to start things off than by first addressing why hydrogen is even on the cards for global giants like Toyota and Bosch Group. And the answer to that question, folks, is pretty simple, which is the idea that lithium ion batteries are not a one solution fits all. When it comes to various end and critical applications, hydrogen, particularly those made from potential renewable resources like solar or wind, can be a very attractive solution as a way to replace fossil fuels dug out of the ground. The issue with gasoline and diesel is twofold. Not only are you releasing emissions when you burn them inside an engine, but also when you dug them out of the ground, you are reducing the amount of remaining resources available to future generations. This is why they are called unsustainable energy resources, which means we need to tackle the problem not only from the usage standpoint, but also from the production standpoint. And that's exactly where the idea of renewable energy comes into play, particularly with hydrogen fuel cells. Because with hydrogen, you can produce the energy from renewable resources using something called electrolysis. And when you also want to convert that to electricity or even heat, you can use it through a fuel cell, which is a zero emissions and zero moving part process, or you can burn it, which also happens to produce significantly lower carbon emissions than any gasoline or diesel engine. And although, yes, the cost of this technology is high right now, simply due to a lack of scale, it doesn't mean it's not a viable solution for the ecosystem we plan when it comes to renewable energy. And this vision is exactly what automotive giants like BMW and Toyota see for a more sustainable path to replacing gasoline and diesel. Because now you can maintain the same driving dynamics and practicality of a fuel, with the only difference being you're retrofitting some of the engine components like the spark plugs, the fuel injectors, as well as the exhaust system for use with the hydrogen gas. And that right there, folks, is where some of the challenges have lied for hydrogen combustion. Because using hydrogen through a fuel cell like in a Toyota Mirai or a Hyundai Nexo is pretty straightforward. You store the hydrogen in a number of compressed tanks, and then you slowly supply that to an electrochemical fuel cell that produces a certain amount of voltage to charge a small traction battery. This entire process produces no noise, no emissions, and basically no vibration, which is exactly why hydrogen vehicles offer the exact same driving experience as battery electric ones. But this hydrogen technology with fuel cells can't really be replicated for applications like motorsports, racing, or even 
heavy duty farm equipment where you need high torque and potentially low power. And that is the exact market that internal combustion engines have dominated with the use of diesel for the past almost one century. Hydrogen burns a lot quicker and with a lot more energy than gasoline or diesel when hit by a high voltage spark. This means that the bore and the block, which is most often made of aluminum and cast iron, will need to be re-engineered to be a little bit stronger for an engine that runs on hydrogen fuel. And although emissions using hydrogen are essentially just water vapor and a little bit of nitrous oxide, companies like JCB who are developing this technology right now for their trucks have realized that the main issue is maintaining optimum temperatures as well as the efficiency when burning this hydrogen. Inside the combustion chamber, hydrogen will take a lot more space, even though it can run at a much higher compression ratio. Compression ratios in the automotive world are essentially a metric for energy efficiency, particularly when using gasoline or diesel. But because hydrogen is a gas and not a liquid, the mechanics certainly shift a little bit more towards the usage of stronger materials and injectors that can fire at a much rapid pace and are lubricated a lot further. Hydrogen engines can run at much higher RPMs, but they don't produce nearly enough torque at those higher levels because of that volume constraint within the cylinder bore. This means that you can't just necessarily directly retrofit a conventional block with hydrogen fuel. Instead, you need to do a lot more engineering development and R&D to produce a viable hydrogen engine that can last 100,000 miles. And this right here, folks, is exactly why it has taken so long for companies to develop a technology using combustion around hydrogen. Toyota and Bosch's efforts make me confident that this could potentially turn into a reality. And for end user applications like farm equipment or even heavy duty trucks, you could see a hydrogen engine sooner rather than later, which could potentially also get carried over into passenger cars. But as usual, folks, that is just my take on the situation. Let me know your thoughts on hydrogen combustion engines down in the comment section below. And thank you very much for watching.